In 2017, the world was treated to another live-action movie that was an adaptation of a, cl a cult classic manga and anime series. That movie? The movie that I am going to be talking about and reviewing today is none other than 2017's live-action Ghost in the Shell movie. Okay, here we go. This is a movie that I have wanted to see and watch for a long, long time now. Believe it or not, um, when this movie first came out, I was incredibly hype and ecstatic to go and see it, but unfortunately I had no one else that really knew what Ghost in the Shell was that wanted to also go see it that would go with me. So what ended up happening? I never got the chance to see this movie in theaters. But, I can no longer say that I haven't seen this anymore because a few minutes ago I just got done watching the 2017 live action Ghost in the Shell movie starring Scarlett Johansson. Hey guys, what's up, what's happening? You got the King of Games 98 here at your service. And for today's video, I'm just going to start out right now by saying there is no way that I could possibly review and talk about this movie in a five minute long time period. Time frame. That sounds better. Time frame. So with that being said, I don't know how long this movie is going to be. This, or, er, excuse me, I don't know how long this review is going to be. This review is going to be however long I feel like making it until I feel like I'm good and I did a proper and just review on it. So with that being said, sit back, kick back, relax, grab a beer, grab a drink, a snack, whatever, and enjoy me talking about and reviewing the live-action Ghost in the Shell movie. Okay, so if you've never seen the 2017 live-action Ghost in the Shell movie and are kind of curious as to what it's about, here's how I would sum it up without really spoiling anything. Okay, taking place in the future, where humans and cyborgs coexist, and humans also have mechanical parts. There exists a task force called Sector 9 that works for the government, that took different people, men and women, and basically experimented on them, trying to create the ultimate half-human, half-cyborg being and make the ultimate weapon out of it. And they did. What they ended up getting was, I mean, after, okay, after a lot of trial and error, they finally ended up perfecting it and getting it right, and they got the major, played by none other than Scarlett Johansson. So, Scarlett Johansson plays the major character, and I'm just going to say right, right here, right now, I freaking loved her playing the role of the major, playing the role as the major character. I loved her. I absolutely loved her. I feel like they couldn't have picked a better actress to play the role of the major in Ghost in the Shell. So, I freaking loved that. That was great. So, Ghost in the Shell, the live action movie, starts out with showing how the major gets 
created, made, and then it, you know, does one of those one year later, uh, you know, things, and it shows her how she has adapted, how she is reacting, how she is out in the field, if you will, because she's basically like a government agent, and, you know, how she has adapted, and how she how she lives, how she exists. So, her partner, Beto, which I love, love, love the actor that they got to play him. I don't know his name off the top of my head, but just that actor and how they made the actor look was spot on Bato. So, freaking love that too. Her and Bato just get sent on uh, a few missions, the first being to infiltrate this, like, dinner where they discover this guy who is secretly, uh, who's, who works for the robotics company, Hanka uh, Robotics, and they're the company that basically is in charge of all the main cyborgs and robots that are in this movie. So, well, okay. I'm, I probably should have said this a while back ago, but you know what? This, this is spoiler warning right here, right now. I am going to try to talk as deeply and heavily into and about this movie as I can. I'm really not... I shouldn't have said that I'm going to try to, you know, how it's... This is how it's summing up without really spoiling anything because I do... I am going to really talk about it a lot. So, a lot is going to get spoiled. So, spoiler warning, here it is right now. If you haven't seen the movie and still want to watch it, stop watching the video right now and go watch the movie. If not, well, you had your fair warning. So... They're assigned to take out this guy who is like the lead designer of Hanka Robotics for the robots that they make. And in doing so, um, they find out that this guy is secretly hacking robots and manipulating them to basically do his bidding and whatever he tells them to. So, you got this guy who is hacking into the net and other robots and manipulating them to basically do whatever he tells them to. And they discover this while the Major and Bato uh, are invading this little dinner. And they don't get to the guy in time and I believe one of the Geisha robots kills him. But, uh, they recover the Geisha robot that killed him and dissect it, and then that's how they discover and find out about the guy, who I forget what his name was, is hacking into and taking control of other robots. So, that happens. Then, they get a tip-off... from, I forget where, uh, about a Yakuza nightclub, and, uh, Scarlett Johansson's character, Major, and, uh, Bato, go there, and invade it, and that was really freaking fun and awesome watching that, the action scenes were awesome, and the fight scenes were awesome, um, and then from there, they find out that the guy who is secretly hacking the net and other robots to take control of them is, like, connected to the undergrounds of the Yakuza building where they invaded. And they, the Major thinks that she found him, but he's really not there and it was just a hologram. Ha! Gotcha. Um... So, then from there on, she is more curious about 
who this guy is trying to hack into the net and other robots. And then she starts to question and wonder who she herself really is. So this movie is Ghost in the Shell, but then it also turns into Ghost in the Shell. I'm trying to find out who I really am. And for me being a pretty big Ghost in the Shell fan, I really like that plot story concept, whatever you want to call it. I really like that because to my knowledge, and I've only seen uh, the 1995 Ghost in the Shell anime movie and just recently Ghost in the Shell 2 Innocence, the anime movie. So those are the only other Ghost in the Shell movies I've seen, but I think it was good that I've already watched them and had the previous knowledge going into watching this because well, having watched those movies... <laughs> As far as I remember, they neither one ever dove into the Major's backstory of who she really was. Who was she before she became a cyborg, you know, killing agent that is assigned to Section Sector 9? You know, who is she? Who was her past life? You know, who was she in her past human life? So, I really dug that story plot, and... Then from that point in the movie on, to me, it just kept getting better and better. The Major slowly starts to find out that what she is isn't who she originally was. And then she starts having glitches or flashbacks, if you will, of past memories of her past human life. And then she really starts to question, you know, who am I? What am I really? And she questions it to her one doctor. And the doctor just kind of, you know, rolls it off like it's nothing. But deep down, she really knows what's going on. She just doesn't want to say anything or help her. Um, and then from that point on, it really, at least to me, the major character really starts to make it her mission to find this hacker and then to find out who she really was in her past life. Which again, I really dug that story, com that story plot of this movie. So... Halfway through this movie, it kind of divulges off track when the Major goes rogue. And, you know, she leaves sec Sector 9 and is just like, you know, I'm not working for this anymore. You know, this isn't working out for me. And she does that because she finally... <coughs> she finally meets the hacker. And the hacker turns out being a past failed experiment of Hanka Robotics's um, half human, half robot experiments for Sector 9. So then, when the Major discovers that, and then she, she discovers that there was past failure experiments that until they finally got it right, they made her. She really started to question everything about herself, which that to me was so powerful and really cool to see this specific character go through. So then the hacker guy starts to tell her, you know, things about herself you know, like that medicine you take twice a day or whatever. Uh, the government gives you that so that uh, the medicine helps you to forget your past memories and so that you have no memory of your former past self life. And that just really blew me away because that was just a huge bomb and... 
then it was it wasn't until that part of the movie that the major character really started to second guess who she was and if what she was doing was right and from that point on she just went rogue and did her own thing and she started having glitches more often and flashbacks of scenes and people from her past life that really started to make her question, you know, who am I really? What happened to me in my past life? Because the government told her that, or not, well, the government told her and then implemented into her memories that in her past life, she was, excuse me, she was on a boat that had an accident and her parents died in that accident and she almost drowned to death but they were only able to save her brain and uh, they didn't really quite elaborate too good on that because how you were only able to save someone's brain from drowning yeah that kind of didn't really make sense but who am I what do I know I'm not a doctor um but, you know, that was just kind of sounded, you know, completely false and, you know, not real. You know, I it didn't really sound realistic, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Like, trying to say I couldn't really buy that. So, then she starts to freak out a little bit and... One of her superiors actually tells and gives the doctor gives the order to the doctor to kill her uh, because they end up capturing her because she wanted to get captured. She wanted to try to get answers. And she, she's in the room with the doctor and the doctor just can't kill her. She just can't. And that was such a powerful and emotional scene. Like, oh my God. And instead, like the serum that she was supposed to give her that would have killed her, she gave her another one. And it didn't kill her. I don't really know what it did. But instead, uh, the doctor did that, and then she gives her like this data chip-looking thing and tells her, these are your actual real memories of your past life. And she was like, go, run free, you know, discover your past self, you know, your past life. And so... That's what she does, and that brings her to, like, this really big apartment complex-looking tower and to this woman's uh, apartment, little apartment complex, where she grabs her cat, and then, you know, without ever having met this woman before in her life as the major she just somehow recognizes her and just knows her. And she doesn't really put two and two together at first, but then she eventually ends up realizing that I knew this woman in my past life before becoming the major. And she kind of got a little, well, she got really freaked out by that because the woman was so generous that she grabbed her cat for her, that she invited her in, I was going to make her tea, but then when the major went into her little apartment and started looking around and looking into the one room especially, it like almost triggered a reaction or a memory in her mind that this looked this looks really familiar to me, but I don't know where I've seen this before, you know, kind of kind of like one of them. And she got just so freaked out, she just left and ran away. Well, it's at this point that she's basically on the run from the government uh, group Sector 9 that she once worked for. Uh, and Bato and Tagusa and... I don't remember the character's name, but the Japanese, like guy that she reported to who actually spoke in Japanese, uh, they basically had walking, walking targets on their back from like the higher up dude 
who found out that they knew that uh, what they did with the experimenting on people and turning them into half human, half cyborgs, and they didn't want that to get out. So they were essentially trying to take him out and kill him so that, you know, the public never found out about that, which doesn't end up happening. And, <laughs> man, I'll tell you what, those those scenes where the Major, Bateau, Tegusa, and the Japanese old guy are fighting the guards that are trying to kill them. Those were some badass scenes, man. Between the fight scenes and the gunfights, they were awesome and just badass. So, that happens. And then from there... It basically, that basically starts to set up the end of the movie. And by this point in time, we basically start to really put two and two together and start discovering and, you know, thinking, uh, figuring things out for ourselves, you know, the as the movie goer or, you know, movie watcher, that um, the major's past life in the Major's past life, she was an actual human woman, um, and she was basically taken uh, by her. Uh, she was basically taken uh, and made into the Major, and was put through the experimentation of becoming half human, half cyborg agent, and she basically got her human life taken away from her, and that point was just so emotionally hard and powerful to watch visually. It's at this point in time that the Major returns back to the rundown apartment complex tower building and she returns to the woman's room and, well, okay, before that, alright, I'm, alright, you know what, I, I don't, I kind of got lost a little bit, so I'm, I'm just going to say the end, and then I'm just going to talk about my thoughts, feelings, opinions about this movie, and then we're going to wrap up this movie review. So, the end of the movie, the movie ends with the major returning back to the apartment complex building, but before she returns to that woman's door, or room, if you will, there's gravestones before that woman's room, and it is there that the Major is in front of a tombstone, and on the tombstone is the name Makoto Kusanagi. And... When it showed that on screen, I freaking lost it. My mind was blown, okay? This was the first time I have ever seen this movie, and I am not lying when I say that. My mind was blown. So, when it showed that scene, I was basically able to put two and two together that the major character in her past human life was Makoto Kusanagi. So, then, in, um, definitely in the first Ghost in the Shell 1995 anime movie, I believe in that movie she goes by Major Makoto Kusanagi. Well, the name Major was given to her at Sector 9, and Makoto Kusanagi was her past human first and last name. So she just decided to keep it and added it onto the major name, which, oh my God, I never knew that. That really just blew my freaking mind. And, you know, I, and, and I'm pretty sure in Ghost in the Shell Standalone Complex, the anime series, I'm pretty sure she went by Major Makoto Kusanagi too. Anyway, so after that, she like kind of repays, she kind of, she kind of pays her respects at that gravestone, and then walks away, and then the camera pans, and you see the older woman 
had come out of her apartment room and sees her there. And then the major walks up really close to her and then they hug. And it's at that scene when you know the major is that woman's daughter who supposedly killed herself, or at least that's what the government told her she did, but that is her real biological daughter, and so that old woman is Major's, is the Major's mom. And that kind of blew my mind too, because again, as far as the two main Ghost in the Shell movies, and, it, and at least if you want to include it, Ghost in the Shell Standalone Complex, I never remember watching any of them and it going that far deep back into the Major's human past life and talking about, you know, what it was like or even what her mom was like. So that was crazy and that was really cool to see. And then after that scene, it shows Major, Bateau, Tagusa, and the old Japanese guy living all safe and sound in their own individual lives. Then it shows the major character on a top of a on top of a very high tower, uh, wearing like a coat, and then she says, um, "Well, you know, on on the little telecom, you know, in her ear, you know, major, come in." And she goes, "Yeah, I'm here." And, you know, then the old Japanese guy tells her, okay, you're clear to go, you know. And then she's like, okay, infiltrating now. And she just takes one step off the building and then just drops in. And that's how the movie ends. That is how the 2017 live action Ghost in the Shell movie ends. Wow, I've been talking for a long time now, but in case you couldn't tell, I love Ghost in the Shell, and that's how passionate I am about this franchise. So, now I'm going to talk about my thoughts, feelings, and opinions about the Ghost in the Shell live-action movie, and then we are going to wrap up this movie review. Okay, so I'm going to start off with what I liked about this movie. The very opening and the very beginning of this movie starts out, I wouldn't say identically to how the 1995 Ghost in the Shell anime movie and the 2004 Ghost in the Shell 2 Innocence anime movies do, but it's along the same lines as that. They basically tell you in some words they set up the scene and what the situation is. You know, it's in the future. Yes, we get that. Uh, human advancements in robot uh, technology or cybernetics, whatever you want to call it, have advanced to the point where humans are getting uh, cybernetic enhancements. And then they're just building straight up whole cyborgs with actual human with an actual human brain. And I thought that was great. I love that. I thought that was a good start describing the advancements in technology with humans and mechanical parts. I like that. I liked how they kept to the source material with how the cyborgs would die saying help me repeatedly and their face coming apart revealing their actual cyborg robot face. And that was one scene in particular that stood out to me with how they kept the source material. And now, since I mentioned that, I'm going to mention a few other things, that things, scenes that were in this movie that I liked and I noticed that made me go, oh, they kept to the source material. Bateau in Ghost in the Shell 2 Innocence the Movie has a pet dog, and he really likes dogs. Well, Bato in the live-action movie has has a really big soft spot for dogs, and he doesn't have a pet dog himself, but 
there's literally a scene where him and the major walk down an alleyway and he gets dog treats to feed four stray dogs. That was so nice and sweet. Um, they kept to that source material. For the doctor, and I forget the character's name, who, for the doctor in, at least, I saw this in Ghost of the Shell 2 Innocence, that anime movie. For the doctor that was like, in charge lead of the uh, cybernetic robots, or the cyborgs, whatever you want to call them, uh, she smoked, and then she herself was either half human, half cyborg, or she was a cyborg herself, and I know this because in Ghost of the Shell 2 Innocence, she lifted up her human eyes, and then it had like weird ports, and she would plug herself into the net, if you will, and they represented that perfectly in this in that scene in this live action adaptation of Ghost in the Shell, which I freaking loved that. Uh the old Japanese guy who is like the major's leader and Bato's uh boss. I thought he was represented very well and the room itself that was shown in his room, like, I thought was definitely taken straight from the source material. So I love that. And that's all that I can think of for source material uh, for things I liked. I loved how they did the transition for when the Major turned invisible. That was awesome. Now, on to my dislikes. There's only two. Don't worry. My first dislike is this. I didn't like how small the title of the movie was at the beginning when they first showed the title of the movie and it being in the bottom right hand corner because it just made it, at least to me, way too hard to see. I glanced away for a moment and I missed it. Seriously, that happened. Uh, but then after, their, uh, after they roll all the opening credits, then they show it the title again in bold in the center, Ghost in the Shell. So I didn't like, I didn't like how they showed the title at first, but then how they showed it the second time was fine. And then the second thing I didn't like, I didn't like how it ended. How it ended, which I did already talk about, I'm not going to mention again, but just how it ended, it kind of left me with questions that I didn't get answers to. With that being, you know... Is the Major still living her life as the Major, or is she living her life as Makoto Kusanagi? Does she still work for Sector 9? I'm, I'm assuming so, because towards the end it was shown that she was, like, on a mission, if you will, to take out a guy, so I'm assuming that, but I just really didn't like how they ended that. Uh, although I will say, how it ended, I felt, did wrap up her story of finding, who, uh, finding out who she really is. So I liked it for that, but then story-wise, how it ended, I didn't like it, if that makes any sense. Phew. Okay. I think that's going to do it for me rambling on and talking about the 2017 live-action Ghost in the Shell movie. So, with all that being said... My final rate for the 2017 Ghost in the Shell live-action movie is going to be an 8 out of 10. Would I recommend to watch this? Yes. If you are a fan of Ghost in the Shell, whether it be the anime movies or the standalone complex anime series, regardless, yes. If you're a fan of the Ghost in the Shell animes, then you would like this. Although, if you have never seen any of the Ghost in the Shell animes, whether it be the anime movies or the anime series, then I don't know if I would recommend this for you to watch, and then I don't know if this would be for you. And with that, I'm going to leave you guys on this note. I liked this movie. I really did. Uh, being a big Ghost in the Shell fan... 
I really did enjoy this movie. I thought it paid really good homage to the Ghost in the Shell anime movies, as well as the Standalone Complex anime series. And I, th I thought it did a good job with keeping the source material into it from the animes, the anime movies, the manga, all that, and bringing it into a live-action movie. Was it perfect? No. Was it horrible? I didn't think so. I thought it was good, and I liked it for that alone. And with that, that's going to do it for this video today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And let me know down in the comments, did you see the 2017 Ghost in the Shell live-action movie? If so, what did you think about it? I know it really got a lot of criticism and mixed reviews for it, so I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions down below in the comments section. Take care, guys.